HBC Digest, uh, welcome back. Uh, distinguished uh, interviews with extraordinary leaders and stakeholders from the HBC community. Today is a very, very um, special opportunity for me. I don't get in, in my line of work uh, in covering black colleges, many opportunities to talk to the brothers and sisters who run band programs. And so to be able to get this brother on today uh, is, is a treat. Dr. Roderick Little, he is the director of bands uh, at Jackson State University. Some of y'all, some of y'all may know him as director of the Sonic Boom of the South. Um, in the headlines this week, uh, for a very special gift, uh, made by a good friend of his, uh, coming up, uh, former NBA superstar, Monte Ellis, uh, to directly support, uh, the boom. And so Dr. Little first, again, it, it's an honor to have you on, man. It's definitely an honor with being here. And, uh, I definitely appreciate the invite. So talk a little bit about this. So when you read through the story, this is um, this is super important in a lot of ways. One is the brand recognition of Monte Ellis, um, one of the greatest basketball players ever come out of Mississippi, mm -hmm. NBA superstar in his own right. Um, and obviously giving back to a school that he, he had obviously admired and is a part of his blood as a, as a Mississippi native, um, but he didn't attend. Um, that's built off a relationship with you. Talk a little bit about how your relationship with him helped him to engage support of the boom. Well, you know, it's, it's funny. You just, you just kind of never know, you know, where life is going to take you. Uh, so Monte and I, we, we, we grew up in the same neighborhood. We attended uh, uh, Rowan middle school and he actually started off in the band program for a little while. And I, I was heavy in band um, and he tried it out, but you know, once he picked up the basketball, I think we all know, you know, what, what happened to do with about being an athlete. So uh, he, he, he picked up the basketball and I, I remained, you know, in the band program. But, you know, we, we you know, uh, continuously saw each other in the neighborhood because right across the street from our middle school was a basketball court. So I just kind of always remember him after I got out of band rehearsal, uh, you know, back there on the basketball court practicing and just kind of honing his skill, after, hon honing his skills rather after I have, um, after I just got done honing my skills as a musician uh, coming out of band practice. So I just kind of always remember that and seeing him in the neighborhood and us kind of speaking to each other. And even though we were kind of going different paths, we always had that connection knowing that um, we were bestowed some special gifts, you know, within us. And we just kind of always kind of looked at each other and understood that our gifts were going to transcend our environment for, you know, both of us to give back to the students that we were at that particular time. And kind of fast forward to present day, um, our AD, AD Ashley Robinson at Jackson State University, he and I were having a conversation. And um, and he said, man, you, you, you'll never guess who I talked to today. He said he, he knew you and he wanted to make uh, that connection again with you. And I said, man, who, who, who are you talking about? Who who uh, did you talk to the other day? He said, Monte Ellis. I said, yeah, man, Monte Ellis and I, we go way back. We grew up in the same neighborhood. Um, as a matter of fact, we went to the same high school, the near high school. And he said, yeah, man. He, he said he wanted to give a donation to the Sonic Boom of the South. And, and it kind of struck me odd. Uh, because, you know, he's an athlete, you know, mm -hmm. so in my mind, by him talking to the AD, uh, the first thing that I thought about was him, was him giving a donation to the athletic department, you know, which would be good within itself. But then when he mentioned the band program, you know, of course, I remember the, the ties that we had in a relationship that we had growing up and Monte actually, you know, starting out in band at one point. And so I gave Monte a call. And uh, and we caught up, you know, we talked about a couple of things. He said, yeah, man, I just want you to know that, you know, uh, every time I work out or, you know, any time that I'm coaching my uh, my my team, he has a he has a, a youth team here mm -hmm. uh, in the city. He said, any anytime I'm coaching my team, uh, man, I like to listen to the Sonic Boom or the South. You know, the music, it gets me energized. And, and I've always been connected to the band. And um, and so with that, I just want to give back, you know, to the program because, you know, I believe in what you're doing. I believe in the Sonic Boom of the South and I just want to give back. And so that was definitely um, something that was huge to me, because as I mentioned by him being an athlete, I thought that he was you know, going to be given to the athletic department. But then he spoke to the sentiments of giving to the band. So that that, again, just let me know um, how much the program means to everybody, you know, not just me, but everybody within our community. And, you know, how many people that we reach. So that's kind of how that started um, as it relates to the conversations between he and I to, you know, give to the Sonic Boom of the South. 
And, and it's a relationship, that obviously, that goes back many years for the two of you personally. But now it's the it's the start of a relationship between he and the institution, um, where it starts with you know sixty thousand dollars in support of the boom. But this is somebody you know somebody who 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 can be you know a, a partner for Jackson State, and that's major. Um, talk a little bit about what what band culture is in COVID nineteen, right? So we know that a lot of, of institutions are still marching. They're still doing, you know, shows in terms of like videos. We just saw Bethune Cookman last night profiled um, in, a, in a voting special on CBS. That was big. We've seen A and T do the same thing. We've seen the Boom do it. Um, what what is it like now, and how do you manage your your students? How do you manage your programming and your training with social distancing and health front of mind? Yeah. So so is I. You know, with, with COVID-19, uh, which is something that can definitely be viewed as, as negative. And, and it is something that's, uh, you know, a detriment, you know, across the nation, obviously. Uh, but, you know, in, in our society and in our culture, uh, we find out how to make things that were meant for negative and change it. Into positive. Positive. Yep. So that's exactly what we've done in our band program. I, I, I am elated to say that we have done uh, so many things in our band program since July, all the way up until this point. I mean, we have, um, you know, with the exception of the uh, philanthropic efforts of Monte Ellis, I mean, we have restructured our program in so many ways and catapulted our program on a national scale. And so with that being said, uh, we have changed the negativity of COVID and changed it into something that's positive for the benefit of our program and all HBCUs. And as we see now across the nation, there has been a, a heightened awareness about not just HBCUs, but just African-American culture in general. Yeah. And so uh, with that being said, a light has been uh, a light has been shined on the HBCUs and what they mean to our culture in general. I, I feel like that we are just starting to really get our just due out in the masses. You mm -hmm. know, back in the early 90s and the 80s and things like that, we had TV shows like the Cosby's and a different world and things like that that was actually uh, showcasing the importance of HBCUs. But that has been forgotten over the years. And so right. now, I think this is another one of those movements uh, to bring that awareness back to what HBCUs have to offer to the nation. And so I'm very excited to be a part of this. As you mentioned, uh, Bethune Cookman was just featured uh, last night on CBS. Um, and as you mentioned, some other HBCUs have been featured as well. FAMU has been featured, North Carolina a and And so we are just getting the notoriety that we have been deserving of for so long. And so to me, this is really the beginning of shedding light on HBCUs, HBCU band programs, um, and more namely, the wonderful talent of our students, man. Our students are the best kept secret uh, with what they do as musicians. And so long, you know, they have been kind of ostracized and frowned upon because of the type of style that we choose to do as musicians and the type of style that we choose to indoctrinate as a HBCU band program. So I'm very excited to be a part of this movement. And again, I can't think of it uh, or I cannot um, categorize it anything other than a movement because this exactly, that is exactly what it is at this particular moment to bring awareness of, uh, to what we do as HBCUs. It's always pressure every Saturday in the SWAC. Um, every halftime, every fifth quarter, there's pressure for you um, and every other band in the SWAC. That's that's our that's our premier band conference, right? Right. Um, but talk a little bit about the pressure in your life. You're a you're Jackson born and raised. You went to Jackson State. You're running the boom. I don't think people understand, like from your story, how competitive and how good you had to be to be from the city, get recruited by the city, get a scholarship from the city, be excel in the band, come on and, and work your way up and become the director of the band. Do, do people get a sense of how, how difficult that is because you grew up in the backyard of a competitive band program? Absolutely not. Um, <laughs> it is definitely one of the most difficult things that I've had to embark on, you know, in my entire life. But that's, that's kind of like the mark of just growing as an individual. You know, you have to go through trials, you have to go through tribulations. And I honestly feel like that I have been placed in this position, uh, you know, not by accident. I, I really feel as though I have been placed in this position 
uh, by a higher power, you know, and, and I'm not sure if, you know, if, if you guys can talk about religion here on the show, but, you know, I, I really believe in God and what he has placed within me to give back to others. And so um, this has not happened by coincidence. I really, I really feel that it hasn't because um, a lot of the former directors, they have had ties with the same uh, communities, with the same high schools that I've had ties with, with, uh, you know, with the same area that I grew up in. And uh, and the high school that I graduated from has a deep affinity and connection with the Jackson State University band program. I mean, the, the, the first director that actually started the, the music programs, not just the marching band, but also the string ensembles and helped catapult the Department of Music was actually um, a, a gentleman by the name of Kermit Holly Sr who actually was the band director of Lanier High School at that time. And so he used students from Lanier to help start the, the Department of Music at Jackson State University. And so that's, that's not by coincidence. And for me to be connected to that is something that I really don't take lightly. But, uh, but to your point, it's something that a lot of people really don't understand. I mean, they, they see band programs and band directors as, as sort of a, you know, kind of a face of entertainment. But we're so much more than that. Uh, the, the most important thing that I would like for people to realize is that we pour back into students. Yeah, we're going to be an entertainment entity for people to see. We're going to put on a show. We're going to rock the house every single time. We're going to bring the energy. But it's very important that people realize that we are educators first. We're music yes, educators first. And we pour back into students first. And um, the biggest thing that, that, that that's really a challenge for me um, especially now uh, amid the COVID-19 pandemic is just making sure that all of our students are okay, man. Um, you know, because they're dealing with so much and, you know, they, they leave their environments to come to a college campus to change their surroundings. And so they really don't have that anymore. They really can't be social in that way. And, and, and when you take out the equation of what band is for them, which is life, it, it brings about a certain amount of different stressors that they are not used to handling on a day, day basis because they're used to coming into the band environment during the fall semester and, you know, practicing and letting that take their problems away. And so uh, really one thing that, that has really been tough for me is just trying to figure out ways to make sure that our students are doing fine amid the COVID-19 pandemic and making sure that they are being beneficial and successful academically. And, you know, uh, of course, mentally and emotionally as well. So um, so that's what I focus on. Of course, I have my own personal challenges as being the director of such an esteemed band program. But my heart just always goes out to my students and just consistently thinking about how they're doing and how they're making it, you know, through a time such as this one. I'm so glad that you brought up that point because, we, you know, we and rightly so, our sector gives a lot of credit to the scientists, you know, the judges, the lawyers. Uh, the business and entrepreneur people that we create, but we we rarely give a lot of credence to how many music educators, how many arts professionals that HBCUs put out, and how many of those students that started out in a band go on to create careers and, and make other little high school bands. And when you look around the country and see all these little middle school and high school bands that look like <laughs> look like you know JSU Sonic Boom, you wonder how that happened because somebody from the Boom went there right. and taught that little band how to do it. And not just that, but how many people come out and, and, and use their experience as musicians to propel them to something else. I got a frat brother who's a, a researcher at Johns Hopkins, play, play trumpet in a boom. So you never, you never look at that trajectory and musicianship as part of your professional and personal development. I, absolutely. And, and that's, that, that's one of the best kept secrets as well. As I mentioned to you, our students are the, the best kept secret, right? And as you just mentioned, you said that you have a colleague that, you know, actually marched in the boom and now he is doing some work with John Hopkins. And so that, that doesn't happen or that is not uh, or that light is not um, or that particular thing is not talked about a lot amongst HBCU band culture. And yeah. unfortunately, you know, some some things that may be negative that are, 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 are pulled out of the HBCU band culture. But we really need to make sure that we highlight all of the wonderful things that our alums and our students are doing out in the community to create positive change. So it's very important, you know, that, that you brought that up. And I'm an avid believer that teachers should be recognized and, and you know, paid for their work just as much as a lawyer or a doctor. Uh, because when I go into offices or, or, you know, doctor offices and get checkups and things like that, a lot of times doctors are musicians, you know, 
or lawyers or musicians. And we know that everybody's connected to music in some type of way. Uh, but, you know, again, going back to my original point about how this is a movement for HBCUs, uh, I'm really hopeful that people are now starting to see our worth and, you know, and, and really realize how much we pour into our students to go out and be these catalysts for change in the societies in which we exist. And so I'm, I'm really hoping that, again, this whole movement can spark a different interest and, and spark a different change, you know, amongst how people see and view the, uh, the, the value that we bring to the whole world in general. And I'll get you out of this on this note, brother. Um, you know, you, you are head of a true business enterprise in the boom. Um, there's licensing, there's contracts, there are employees that are, have ties to that, but they don't get a lot of the benefits of being a, a quote unquote business entity. How can people be like Monte Ellis and be cognizant of just how much support and just how much resources or how many resources it takes to run this program? And how can we give back to the marching band? How can we how can we specifically give to Jackson State Sonic Boom of the South? And I'm glad that you brought that up because, you know, when, when we look at, you know, the world of television, uh, there has been more HBCU band programs that have had reality TV shows, uh, yes, sir. had shows, you know, on Netflix with BCU and even Gramlin had a reality TV show. You know, you had some people with Southern back when they Alabama did State, yep. on BET, Alabama State. And so you know, with that being said, people have put on blinders as it relates to what the HBCU band programs bring to the nation, that they, they put on blinders as it relates to using us for the entertainment value. However, they don't want to support us the way that they should financially to help cultivate that culture. So my thing is, is that if you're going to use us on all of your platforms as it relates to the entertainment that we can bring to your crowd, it's time that you support our efforts, right? Uh, because a lot of these HBCU band halls are small. A lot of these HBCU band programs, we don't have the instruments that, you know, a lot of the PD, uh, the PWIs have. And so we need those resources because our students are, number one, deserving of those resources. And number two, we provide that entertainment value that all of these uh, major corporations are pulling from to help entertain their crowds. And so with that being said, I'm speaking to all of the major corporations that uses the mystique of our wonderful band programs to build your audience is mm -hmm. now time to open up those coffers and give back to these HBCU band programs because again our students are worth it and they uh they do an amazing job and, and it's time again to bring awareness to what these programs mean not only the HBCUs but the nation as well because you know as uh you know a lot of people always say have time is game time and that's not to take anything away from athletics and football because we're getting ready to to you know to take the world by storm with football with coach prime but again it's the same type of uh you know relevance and it's the same type of love and deep affinity that our fans have for the band program like they have for athletics so again to all the major corporate uh, corporations when you see things that hbcus are doing please email you know not just the sonic boom of the south but all hbcu band programs and say hey how can i donate to uh to provide some instruments for for your program uniforms for your program facilities for your program, and most importantly, scholarships for your program. So we can make sure that our students are successful and go and provoke change in the environments in which they exist. Real quick, man, you, you got a formation cooked up for, for, for Dion? <laughs> Look, man. You got, you got a, point, a 21 on, on the field? <laughs> Coach Prime and I, uh, at, you know, after speaking to, to the AD, he, he and I are supposed to be meeting sometime in the near future. And so, uh, you know, one, one of the biggest things that AD, Ashley, and I wanted to do, we wanted to make sure that we strengthen the relationship between the band program and athletics. And so we're definitely going to be doing some exciting things in, in conjunction with Coach Prime to overall make sure that we are supporting our students and elevating our university at large. So that, that's important. So that's that's our goal. That's our charge. It's, it's not about, you know, in, individual uh, clout or anything that we can do individually for ourselves. This is all about the students. And this is all about showing the, the the glory and the relevance 
of Jackson State University, the Sonic Boom of the South, and also our athletic department as well. So be on the lookout when Cro uh, Coach Prime hits the field with that football team and, and um, you know, in all this glory, the Sonic Boom of the South is going to be there to support as well. So make sure that you stay in your seats during halftime to take a look at what that's going to look like. Dr. Roger Little, the, pre uh, the, the pride of Jackson, Mississippi. We appreciate you, brother. No, I appreciate you for having me on.